<laughs> it, look, it is it is one of things people say. Just let them go uh, off their heads. But again, I I, I always go back. We watch and, you sports know, because always, we care about people. Yeah, know, and also it's people. also with kids. Like I and I always say this: like if 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 an adult or a parent looks at a kid and says they have to dope to move up that level, they have to use you know steroids, they have to use creatine when they're sixteen, seventeen, eighteen years of age. If they need to go push their body so hard, then stop. Now at the other side of it. I'll, I, people are complaining about the NFL and brain injuries and so on. Again, I, I grew up, you know, boxing. I played rugby, where there are, you know, obviously brain injuries in both and se- like severe injuries in both. Um, if you're an adult, you make a choice, and you make a choice to do it. But if you want to be clean, you're not making a choice to go and get someone who's doping. So that's that's the difference. But even if all these people who say, okay, it's going to be completely clean, and you test everyone all the time. Someone will still take that advantage. It's like it's just it's it's human well, nature. People, it's like to, people will always cheat in exams, no matter what you put in. Like fun wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this an admission? <laughs> no, no, no. You will always have people who cheat in exams. So, like, even when I, I didn't cheat. Fun, no, but as in, okay, wait for the Andrew, did you I cheat? Find, you I have no comment. My no, mother might be watching, so I, I can't find, say. I find it funny that. When you think of, so let's say you hear these stories and like about college exams and Irish, the Irish state exams, where despite the fact that you're in a room where everyone can see everything you're doing, there are people who go in and still cheat. And it's like, where, like, and How it's, it's like, it, it must be like you, the brains you must have to be able to do that, <laughs> apply it to bloody studying. And be like, <laughs> it's the concept with, that's the bit about doping. There are two things that really, really call me. There's the, obviously the long-term duty of care to athletes so when they're mm-hmm. state-sponsored doping that is just like you were taking a risk but also when you talk there a minute ago andrew or um, alan even about kids and like we i suppose it's, it's been discussed in the past about um young underage rugby players and the idea of doping to get you ahead in terms of p- progression towards national or professional teams but the minute you have parents coaches and those who are meant to be responsible for underage athletes encouraging or assisting in doping you're essentially teaching them to cheat for life and you're putting them on a course that they can't get back from there's no Ethan, now, i know i discussed this before andrew so i'll let you come in in just one second um former classmate of mine from ucd his son uh, this is this is a good few years ago now i think it was 2018 would be 2018 and of course he needed us work in sports sports nutrition reporting sports coaching as well. So he, I met him at the Blanchard Shopping Centre, um, the uh, the oh, car park. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Easton knows where it is. But so I went to the shopping centre and, and we had a chat and we're standing there talking. His son who's play, was playing junior cup rugby. Uh, so it's like kind of the early age group, like up to 16, um, was told that he had to put on, I, I, again, I always messed this up because I was so shocked at the time. I couldn't remember it was like 10 pounds or 10 kilos, but it was 10 kilos that he had to put on over the summer. And have been given like all these tubs of mass gainer to, to put it on. Now he's a big kid. Mom's big, dad's big. As in, like they're, they're, they're tall and they're strong. Like, mm. um, but I was I was in shock when they're like, "This is what they have to like." That he was being told, and I just turned around and said, "I wouldn't let him. No, I wouldn't let him do it." It's like, why? And I said to him, "Look, this is going to, to damage his health. Uh, he should still be kind of you know just relaxing because his body he's still growing. I mean, he was still growing. Like he was like." half a head shorter than his dad but he's going to be taller than his dad he is now taller than his dad um now his dad fell out of me and just you know we've been in contact you know facebook twitter and a whole lot um then he just like didn't want to contact me uh even he blocked me and i was like because of a conversation inside the shopping center um afterwards like a while a good while afterwards and we kind of discussed again went for a pint and I went back home and said like uh, yeah he understood where i was coming from and this again this is the thing is he's upset like i mean would you want someone like your own kids or someone else's kids to have to dope if they have to know? And again, a lot of tennis players I, I've I've worked with, I would like I would see when it got to the moment said no, I need to do something to get to a higher level to stay at the higher level. I'm like no, don't. And we have like a, my former companies companies, we just we broke contracts with players. It cost us money, but we broke contracts. Said no, we're not doing because if you go to tr- coach train with that person, you're done. Andrew, sorry, go to 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 finish up with you on on this one. Well, I don't know. I don't want to add too much, but it actually ties in with exactly the. Well, it moves on from the point you've just made. It, it occurs to me that look, people dope for a reason. 
what is the motivation because the utter obsession thirst desperation to get ahead i think almost we have brushed over the root cause of all of this which is the the insane pressure put on every single age level of every single sport to succeed my daughters both go to swimming lessons and they enter competitions which are great fun they swim with their friends but i mean it doesn't concern me yet and i'm saying yet they used to have one lesson um three times a week then the coach said okay we're now going to have double lessons i mean we're talking like 45 minutes now it's an hour and a half then it moved up to three lessons i was like okay fine and every lesson you know she's very tired but she likes it because she's with her friends then they started saying okay i think we need to add a gym session at 10 o'clock on a friday night i am not joking that was the suggestion that came up and i thought well hang on i am putting my blooming foot down here this is getting ridiculous once it goes beyond fun you've moved up a level to where the choice either becomes you push your body through limits in a technically clean sense but you're breaking your body down or mentally breaking yourself down given the pressure you're putting yourself under or you turn to doping i mean doping is what i'm the point I'm trying to make is i think doping is just simply one of two avenues that sports people and i mean of all ages are forced into it just happens to be one that is has laws against specific substances which aren't necessarily followed but where does that come from initially well okay heart may be a controversial point but can you honestly tell me and probably you can but can you honestly tell me all forms of doping are necessarily completely worse than the physical strain you put bodies that are just not ready for it through or the mental strain you put on them they're all as bad as each other the problem is there never was ever going to be a solution for this because of the the nature of sport it was always going to become wildly popular global accessible watched and therefore the only route it was going to go down was it was going to become more important more money was going to get involved with it, more pressure it was always going to end up this way so we can cry about doping as much as we want and it is right to do that we can cry about putting children under pressure as much as we want but what did we think the solution was going to be what did we think the reality could have been it was never going to be any different